everyone and welcome back to the channel. We just finished installing the BAC 4000 kit from eMoto Bros on Cole's bike here and we're looking to maximize the stock power that you can get out of this battery that comes with the Suron. We're going to be using our BMS bypass kit that we are selling on eMotoBros.com so you can go pick one of these up or if you want to make one yourself they're not too hard to make. So if you know how to uh, or if you know the risks associated with bypassing your battery you can skip ahead um, to the part in the video but if you're not aware you can stick around and uh, we'll tell you how to do it safely and the risks that are involved. So the stock BMS uh, has a hard limit at 85 amps and it's not programmable meaning that you can only get 5,000 watts continuous out of this BMS uh, before it'll start shutting off um, at full throttle. To go around that and get more power you do something called the BMS bypass uh, and what that is, is clipping a wire on the discharge side so that when your cells are discharging, they're not being fed through the BMS and then to the, the port here where it's discharged at. So what that does is it allows you to pull as much amperage as this controller demands and the BMS is not telling it to slow down at all. So what that means for you, if you have the Emoto Bros kit, when you go into the Egg Rider app, there'll be your max power there are, um, th these cells are in a, uh, a 10 stack. Um, they're, they're a 10 P and there's, they have a max discharge rate of 10 amps each. And in a parallel of 10, that means that there's a hundred amps max discharge. It's 67 volts, which is full charge on a 60 volt battery. That's a little over 7,000 Watts. So you set this to 7,000, uh, on your egg rider app and your controller will pull no more than 10 amps per cell, uh, which is an area for this battery where you're not going to be damaging it, and that's important. Yes, you can turn your controller above 7,000 and this battery will do it, but you risk damaging your cells and that's not worth it. So another, uh, another thing that comes with that is that your battery will not turn off on its own when it gets down to low charge. And you can't use your, your indicator here anymore because when you clip that wire, it makes the indicator delayed by a couple of hours. So when you charge your battery and let it like sit overnight, this indicator will be accurate. But when you're on a ride, you have to let it catch up for about two hours before it tells you an accurate percentage here. To get around that, our display tells you the exact voltage and percentage of the battery real time. So you don't risk damaging it. So what you're gonna need to do on the discharge side is you need to keep monitor your percentage and voltage here. What we do is we have a max voltage of 4.2 per cell, which gives us a high end of 67 volts. And then we have a minimum voltage of 3.2 per cell. And that gives us a minimum voltage of around 52 volts. You set those in the uh, Egg Rider app, which we will show in the video we, we released on how to install this kit. But you set those and you need to be monitoring that uh, because if your battery drops below 52 volts, you are entering a range where you risk doing damage to the cells and you really should stop riding it. It'll still work, but you should really consider not continuing to ride. So another misconception is that you're gonna have to do some weird things uh, when you're charging. That's completely not true. When you plug this bike in, there, there's a charge side and a discharge side, like I was saying. You're doing nothing to the charge side. So what's going to happen is when you plug it in, it'll charge just like normal. It'll limit it. Uh, it'll limit the inflow of current. And when your battery reaches full charge, it'll the or the the charger like normal will turn itself off. And when you bypass, it's good to leave it plugged in a little bit longer and let the cells just balance. That's when you're at 100 and you hear your charger turning on and off, even though you're at 100. That's the cells balancing. It's really important to let it do that. Um, so those are some of the risks involved with doing it. Now we're gonna go inside and we're gonna use our Emoto Bros bypass kit and do the bypass on the stock battery. So now that we're inside, I'm gonna take a two and a half millimeter Allen on the end of a screw gun here. And all of these screws around the top of this battery here, we're gonna pull every single one of those out. So once you have those 10 screws out, put them in a safe place 
and then this lid here will pop up. If you'll notice, there's this O-ring that goes around the uh, battery here. You need to really keep track of that. Turn this, so you can see what the inside looks like. So this, this rubber seal is down here on the low side. Um, and it's stuck down here. It's not like glued on or anything, but you, you really want this up in this groove here. We can worry about that when we put it back together. So basically what we're gonna do here is this is your discharge side. So we're gonna take and splice this wire and then these three poles down here, we're gonna take our Emoto Bros bypass kit and when we splice this wire, this end here, you'll just cap it. You won't do anything with that. And then this will butt connect in like that to this wire and then these three with the uh, the three ring lugs on the end here will go there, there, and there. So really the only thing you need for this kit is you're gonna need a lighter for the heat shrink and you're gonna need something to crimp this six gauge butt connector. Um, you can use a strong pair of pliers, an actual crimping tool is what I would recommend. Um, but either way, you're gonna need some way to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a pair of pliers here and a flathead screwdriver we're gonna cut this wire and you wanna cut it towards the um, towards the heat shrink here so you get a lot to work with. And then we're gonna use the flathead to take this, uh, this insulative putty stuff off these terminals here. Um, and we're going to need to replace that. So one of the things you should also buy uh, is some sort of insulative material that you can spread over this lug. We're gonna use RTV silicone um, but there's a lot of things out there that you could use that insulate and, and harden up like this. So we'll be right back uh, with a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. Before we cut any wires and remove any of this putty, it's very important to realize that this is still a live battery. There's no way to discharge these cells and make them not dangerous. Uh, you need to be doing this in an area with concrete around you, uh, preferably in a garage where the doors open or even outside, because if you short anything in here, and one of these cells catch fire, it's like an inferno that you literally cannot stop. So it's extremely important that you do everything safe. And we're gonna show you how to do that so you don't need to be concerned, uh, but be very weary. For example, when I cut this wire, you need to keep track of where both ends of this wire are and they're not swinging down and touching the positive side of things over here. If negative touches anything positive, there's going to be an issue. So really try and avoid that. So what we're gonna do first is take this screwdriver here and we're going to just remove this putty. Sometimes the edges, you can find an edge that's already folded up and just kind of get under it and peel it up like this. And you, you can touch these, these connections here uh, and it's not an issue. It's when you start connecting positive and negative uh, with no insulation that it becomes an issue. So just find your Find your little gaps here and get under it with a screwdriver and uh, just take all this off and then we will be back with you when we have finished that. So one more time before we cut this, it's very important that you do not short anything and we also are not responsible uh, if you mess this up in any way. We're showing you a safe way to do it, but there, there are unsafe ways you could do this and really mess things up. So uh, pay attention, do it the right way, and, and be extra safe. So we've gotten the, the insulative covers off the, the rings here, and now we're gonna go up here and, and cut this wire. One more thing that I wanna mention, while you're in here digging around with a, your screwdriver, and you go to like pull a piece, watch the end of your screwdriver, because this is metal, this is conductive. If you start touching things up in here, you're at risk for whatever happens. So we're gonna, Cut the wire like that, the negative side. And the first thing we wanna do is pull these so that they're not, these can touch obviously, but we want them to just be bent out of the way of the board here uh, and anything on the positive side. This side here, like we were saying, just needs to be covered. You can cover it in any way you want. We're just gonna electrical tape this end off. Uh, there might be a safer way to do it, a better way to do it, but this is gonna be inside uh, housing that's waterproof, waterproof, and uh, realistically the tape shouldn't come off and you shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, 
but again, you could do that a different way if you want. So we're gonna get some tape and cover this up, and then uh, we are going to strip this wire here, and we'll be back with you. So before we strip this, very important, slide the heat shrink on before you make the connection. And this heat shrink will be included in the kit. Uh, so you wanna take your wire strippers. If you don't have strippers, you can use a knife, but uh, we do, so we're gonna do it this way. Cut it and pull it off like that. And this is braided too, um, and not solid core, so you might wanna twist these together, and really make sure that's a tight bundle. And then we're gonna take this other end here, and we're gonna connect this. So before we do that, there's metal on the end of this, and you are connecting it to the negative side. These cannot be touching things in here other than this negative side here. So again, just, just be very conscious of where pieces of metal are that you're connecting to live wires before you do it. Another thing, got that taped off, so that ends safe now, and that can just be tucked out of the way like that. So we're gonna take and put this over this end and then we are going to use this pair of crimpers here. Most people probably aren't gonna have something like crimpers, um, like heavy duty six gauge crimpers, but you can just use a pair of pliers uh, or you can even solder this into here uh, if you're comfortable doing that. But you need to make sure this connection is solid. So after you crimp it, hold here and here and pull uh, and make sure that that connection is tight. You do not want this coming off in the middle of a ride and then you're shit out of luck because you have no power going to your bike now. So we're gonna crimp this on and then we'll get back with you. So the, with this pigtail here that you have, you need to be really mindful when you connect are connecting to this negative side here that you watch your metal leads on this end and that they're not getting towards these positive wires or anywhere up near this board. Um, and it helps to have uh, an extra set of hands and obviously these crimpers, you don't need these it's gonna make it a lot easier if you have an actual crimping tool. Um, but there are, I mean, normal pliers can crimp things like this. You just need to tug on it at the end and make sure that your crimp is good. So when you go to do this, you're gonna to wanna to push this wire as far as you can into here and then crimp where it starts to neck at the very end. And then we'll do a second crimp uh, farther in. So it's very important that you get these as far in as you can go and really hold them tight there. You even wanna get some of that shielding in there if possible. So we're just gonna go around. I wanna get right at the end here. And also, these crimpers are metal, so be careful where these are. There's that all in. Yep. All right. Give it a crimp there, and we'll come up a little further. Give it a second crimp there. And now, give it a good tug. So that's, that's tight now. He's pulling on that pretty good. That's what you want. Just like us, you may have it slip out the first time. If you crimp this though, to the point where these aren't, the like you squish them in a weird way and then this backs out, you can find these connectors on Amazon if you ruin the one we send with you. Um, we may actually consider giving you two of these in a kit in case you mess one up. But yeah, just be mindful that if you mess up this crimper, and you can't slide this in back in, you're gonna have to replace it. So now that's fully connected. We're gonna slide the heat shrink over everything. And then we are going to get a lighter and, uh, and heat that up and make sure all that connection is nice and secure in there and that there's no way any of those leads can touch. So we're gonna get a lighter and we'll be back with you. All right, we're gonna shrink this down with this torch here. You should probably use something not as aggressive, but it's all we had around us, so that's what we're gonna use. like that it's all together everything's nice and tight and now we can move on to removing these three screws here and connecting your leads so what I like to do first is start on this back one since it's the one that's the hardest to reach and what we're gonna do is just loosen this middle one and also these screws have a very like oddly shaped head it looks like it's gonna be a small screw but we're using a number two on it and 
Make sure to put a good amount of down pressure because if you don't, they can strip. But we're gonna wanna loosen those and then spin these two out of the way. And then we'll come back to this one back here and we need to fully undo this one. We're just gonna do one at a time here. And there's a little washer on here. And so the order of these is gonna be the screw and then the washer, then the stock um, eyelet, and then the one that comes in our kit. And you're just gonna wanna feed this like this through here, down onto that, and then simply just screw this back in. May take a little bit of finessing around with these just to get it back where you need it, but I'm gonna situate these wires in a way that this lid's gonna go back on easily because now we've got more wires in here than we started with and it's gonna be a little tight, but it will go. So we're gonna connect all these and then we'll be back with you. So now that we have our three rings over here tightened down, we're going to take this uh, Ultra Copper RTV silicone. I know this name is a really horrible name for them to choose. It says Ultra Copper. There's n actually not uh, copper in here, so this is not conductive. This, ins this is insulative, just a weird name. So we're gonna apply this to each of these rings, kind of try and make it look like this. You probably won't be able to make it look as pretty, um, but that's not really the point. This is in a battery, you won't be able to see it. We're gonna put this on here and then we are going to take this battery inside or somewhere where it's above 70 degrees and let this harden for a couple hours um, and then we'll we'll come back so i'm going to apply this real quick and we'll show you what that looks like and then we're going to take the battery inside and let that harden up so i just like to get a large amount on my finger again this probably isn't going to look pretty but you just really want to get the exposed metal on those terminals covered up with each one. I'm going to try and get these wires out of the way. It's not always possible. Alright, I'm going to get a uh, paper towel and kind of clean up around the rim here because um, that's that gasket that was here. We peeled it off and we stuck it back up on the upper half because um, that's going to make it easier to install. That's actually kind of one of the worst parts. Um, but since that's out of the way, I'm going to clean this um, so that it makes a good seal. And then we're going to just take this battery inside and we're just going to let it sit like this. Uh, depending on what you use, you just want to make sure it's firm. Uh, this stuff in particular, it's not going to get like hard like this stuff will. Uh, it'll still feel a little bit um, pliable, but just let it sit inside. There's instructions on the back for how long it usually takes. Follow those, uh, and we'll come back with you to reassemble the two halves together when this is dry. All right, so we let that RTV dry for uh, a couple hours, and now, as you can see, it's still you know, a lot squishier than the stuff that was on there from the factory, but this will do the job. It's dry to the touch. It's not on my hand anymore, so it's ready to put the battery back together. So we're gonna get our Allen wrench that's on the impact gun out again. And we're going to put the lid back on. Now you have to be mindful of that gasket falling out. And if it comes out, it's kind of a pain to get all back in there but it went back together for me pretty easily. So you want to be careful about not stripping these out because that will be a pretty big headache for you. Put that in there nice and light. Next ones.
So, it looks like I'm having an issue with the gasket not um, being perfectly set, which is unfortunate, and you're probably going to struggle with it too. But I'm going to back out this side here and use the last screw to try and move that gasket around to get it seated properly. I'm hoping I don't have to take the whole lid off, but uh, you really never know. It's always a struggle. I'm going to use a tiny little pick flathead to get in there. You know, I'm just going to take this off again. Yep, that's what I thought. Sometimes you gotta fiddle with this guy a little bit more than you want to. Um, fortunately, that's just kind of the name of the game with this gasket. It doesn't seem to want to stay in there very well. All right. You don't need to slam these down with an impact as hard as they'll go, you know, just kind of cinch them down a little bit, and that's all you need. Alright, so we have the battery fully assembled. Once you have your battery put back together, you're ready to throw it back in your bike and see if it works. I want to remind you that with the stock controller, you're not going to see any change in performance. You need to have an upgraded controller that's set up to draw the correct amount of power. Our controller kits will be going live on December 7th. And also, if you would like to purchase a BMS bypass kit, like the one that you saw in this video, that is live as of now. So head over to our website, emotobros.com, to check that out if you'd like to purchase one. All right, we're gonna put this back in the bike and see if we did it right. in there. Plug her in. Flip your breaker. Close it up. Alright. And we have our controller set up so sport mode on power level 9 will have a 7,000 watt power draw. If you are interested in seeing what the performance gains are after you bypass your battery, then stay tuned because we'll be releasing a video on that soon. 
Thanks for watching our video, and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider the like button as it helps us out a lot. Also, if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.